Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Kent, and again, Amos is not joining me, but I've got somebody possibly better. Uh, Lucas, his son. <laughs> How's it going, Luke? Uh, pretty good. Tomorrow is my birthday. Yeah, oh my God. What are you going to be, like uh, 13? Like four, 14, 14. 14. A little bit higher, but yeah. Yeah? yeah. How, how old are you going to be? 17. Oh, God. Oh, my God. 17. I have a 17-year-old, people. Does this even make sense? Because it doesn't make sense to me. All that means is that you're going to get another batch of gray hairs on your head. <laughs> yeah, to add to them. Oh, my God. Oh, man. So, how, how was your week? you have a, a good week at school? Um, yeah, it's no school. Summer summer break has started. God, like this is the first week, so I'm super <sighs> super happy about that. Where has all the time gone? This is this is just <laughs> Oh, I I need I need a moment. Mm, okay. Um, all right. So it's summer break already and it's already your 17th birthday. Mm. That's insane, man. Um well, your yeah. birthday is coming up like your 110th or something, something like that. Something like that. My 11th. Oh, yeah, your 11th It's going to be my 11th. 11th. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, so it is summer, like you said. Do you have any plans for the summer? Uh, like to get my provisionals license sometime this summer. Oh, yes. Your driver's license. Which you should have gotten last year, <coughs> but but you know, nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, Wonder Mom says camping. Uh, that might be in the cards. I I don't know. You're not the um, you're not the most prolific outdoorsman. Mm, uh, I'd rather stay inside and play Overwatch. Ooh, Overwatch is that is that a is that a thing? Yeah, you is that even out yet? Bet your face is out right now. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all Luke has been doing for what about a week now? Yeah, about a little a week. over a week. Just got it. It was like an early birthday present. Thank you so much for that being early. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured it was kind of important to to give it to you when it came out because to make you wait an extra week and a half for the game <laughs> that everybody is talking about and all your friends are like, oh my God, did you see this? And you got to play this guy and you got to, but you're just <laughs> sitting here like, Ugh. because if, it, if your birthday wasn't coming up, you just would have bought it for yourself and you would have had it on day one. Well, yeah, probably, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I was like, ah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to make him wait for it. So, mm. um, yeah. So gamer life. Am I right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's really fun. I definitely suggest playing it. Uh, it's a lot more. There's a lot more strategy to it than like Call of Duty, which I I, I loathe. <laughs> so if you're yeah. a Call of Duty fan, I'm I'm so sorry. Well, you're not much of an FPS guy, but you really got into Star Wars Battlefront there for uh, several yeah. months. I, I'm, I might play that again, like. But yeah. Overwatch is life right now. <laughs> right, <laughs> ball is life. Yeah. Well, you know. Blizzard has a really good track record of late mm. with uh, with really quality, really high quality games. Yeah, I'm just pretty much a Blizzard fanboy. Play Hearthstone a lot. Uh, not as much recently it's because of Overwatch. Right, but, of course. Uh, <laughs> wow, I've played some Heroes of the Storm. Tried out World of Warcraft. Played a bit of StarCraft too. Um. I haven't played Diablo, and I don't plan on it. Yeah, see, I was never a big fan. I was never a big fan of Diablo. Um, I played it a long, long time ago, like when it first came mm. out. I, it, well, it was either it was either Diablo one or two. I think it was one actually, a long time ago, and it just it felt like like an early Nintendo game to me. Yeah, like just very basic and just just kill, 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 kill. Like insta kill type stuff, like a hordes, just killing hordes for, you know, you just pick up all this treasure that they drop. And <laughs> it's, just like, it's like, man, is this is this Atari or maybe like early Nintendo? I don't know. I just I, I couldn't get into it. I, obviously, it's improved over the years, and I've heard, you know, great things about the newer games. But I've just got that picture in my head of the original one when I played it, and I just mm. it just has no 
it just does not pull <laughs> me. Yeah. So I did something really cool this week. It was um, actually it might have been last weekend. I don't know. Uh, it was it was definitely earlier early in the week. Mm-hmm. Um, on this show, I always end the show talking about beer. Rate beer in particular. Go to ratebeer.com and look up username Del Noche to see all of my reviews. This week, I hit a milestone. I am at 500 reviews now. Yay! Get me right. No, You're that's 500 beers smarter now. All right, or dumber. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I, I don't know. It was really cool. It's something that I really enjoy re- reviewing beers. Um, it, it's just really cool to me to try the different styles and i'm as i talked about last week with jackie which i haven't published the episode yet i'm sorry for you people that uh, typically watch <laughs> or listen on uh, uh after it's published and not watching live but uh, anyway that's coming soon uh but i talked a lot about history with Jackie last week and how much the, we're both kind of history buffs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I really enjoy about beer is learning about the history of either the brewery itself, the style of the beer, uh, the country that that particular style originated in. Um, of course, I'm on, into the Trappist and the history of the Trappist and everything. And I... I don't know. It's just it's just something that I've I've really taken to and and uh, yeah, five hundred beers is a is a milestone. So that's, I thought that was pretty cool. Do you know what your five hundredth beer was? It was a dogfish head. Um, which one was it? It just go, go to ratebeer dot com, <laughs> look up username Del Noche, and uh, you can see what it was. But it was definitely a dogfish head. Uh, dogfish head is one of my favorite. <laughs> craft brewers uh in fact i I got into craft beer when i was in europe and when i was in the states prior to that i was a bud light drinker oh yeah and i i went to europe and i discovered good beer and um i couldn't wait to get back to the states to try uh these craft beers that i'd been reading about because like I said, when I was in the States before, I just drank shitty beer, and I didn't really know about craft beer. Uh, I knew there were more expensive beers on the shelf, but I thought it was just more of the same. It just cost more. Maybe mm. it was better packaging or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I, I just I, I didn't get it. Uh, but once my eyes were open and I started learning about American craft beers, I couldn't wait to come back. And Dogfish Head was the first American craft beer mm-hmm. that I had tried. And so I thought it was kind of fitting to... Have my 500th review be a dogfish head. Um, Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. really good. Yeah, uh, go to ratebeer.com. <laughs> <laughs> Look up username Del Noche and you can read my review. <laughs> One of these days, someone will do it. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. Well, it sucks that the rate beer is not like traditional social media. Mm. Like you could add friends and things like that, but it's not like it's not this connected world like Twitter, Facebook, mm. Instagram, things like that are. Um, so it's it's kind of hard to interact uh, with other users on there. So mm. it's just you know it's not a developed social community. Uh, rate some beers. <laughs> yeah. All right. So D and D. Yes, Dungeons and Dragons. Is, is that something that that you might be doing this summer? Uh, it, definitely. I, I I really want to play D and D, but no one's being a dungeon master or game master, so I'm trying to take that role and make worlds and stuff. Okay. And I've so told, so you're gonna be the DM it, for the first session at least. Like, yeah. You know, uh, I've told. You and a few other people to make characters. Well, how is your character? Oh, my character's awesome. I've got a half elf wizard, <laughs> and he's got a cool backstory. I, I'm really looking forward to playing this character. Uh, traditionally, when I when I played role playing games in the past, I preferred to be like the fighter archetype mm-hmm. uh you know whether it's you know depending on the world it's either you know a warrior or a knight or mm-hmm. or what have you um but i liked it because it was simple like when it comes to rules and dice mm-hmm. rolls and stuff like that fighters are a lot simpler and you don't have to worry about oh my gosh what's my cantrip and <laughs> do i have enough mana to cast my level two sp-? like oh jesus i just want to like 
fight where I got to fight mm -hmm. and then spend the rest of the time just enjoying the story that's being told, you know, and, and have opportunities to, you know, role play and add to the story and, and things mm -hmm. like that. that. That's what I like about it. Um, you already had a fighter. Yeah. For your campaign, and you needed a mage or a wizard, whatever. And uh, I was like, all right, God, okay, fine, I'll, I'll give it a try. Well, the more that I got into developing the character, I really started to enjoy the idea of playing a ma magic user for once. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it's... <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it, and I can't. I can't wait to see what you come up with, and oh, and dang. how all know, this like pressure. Yeah, pressure, pressure, <laughs> pressure. No, it's gonna be fun. Uh, I, you're you're very creative. Uh, you used to write a lot of stories when you were younger. Mm. Uh, you've got a very fertile imagination, and you're into, uh, you know, the the fantasy genre. Mm. You, you're very knowledgeable of the, you know, the fantasy worlds, the the Archives. fairy realm, you know, and as as much enthusiasm as as you have put into being a DM, um, yeah, man, I I have nothing but but faith that it's gonna be a fun game, <laughs> like you know, you know, pressure, pressure, yeah, no, but I, it's I know it's gonna be fun, um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um. Uh, so I guess it was about a week ago, week and a half ago. There was an incident at the Cincinnati Zoo. Oh, yeah. It's about a gorilla? A gorilla named Harambe. So there was a 17-year-old gorilla at this zoo. And mm. I, I believe they had 10 gorillas all together. Okay. And uh, this particular gorilla was, was one of them. And this little boy, I think think he was, he was four. yeah four, i want to say four he somehow managed to get into the like in the enclosure mm -hmm. and then fell into the the actual area where this gorilla was and uh, yeah like oh my god uh, thinking of it from a, a parent's perspective i can't even imagine the fear yeah oh my god uh, yeah, so the, the, the kid falls in, first of all, mm -hmm. and then the gorilla grabs the kid and basically just, like, you know, holds the kid hostage. And the more that, like, the people that, that were observing this happening, the more excited they got and scared or whatever they, you know, there were uh, people screaming and yelling and, like, oh, my God, help that kid and, you know, stuff like that. It agitated the gorilla, and the gorilla actually grabbed the child by the foot and started dragging him around. Oh, the... I didn't hear about this. Yeah, there, there's a video out there. I, I watched the uh, the video, like somebody with their with their smartphone mm -hmm. uh, videoed this, and I actually watched it. It's like it's not super long. It's like a 15 second clip or something. Mm -hmm. But it, it's at the point where the gorilla is getting agitated and grabs the child by the foot and drags him around the pen, which is like a, where they were was like a, a shallow water mm -hmm. um, kind of thing. And I, I guess it was like a little pond or something they mm -hmm. had in there, but it was very shallow. But it, he grabs the, the child dra and pulls him around this, this like water area. And then, it just like it has this like death grip on him and <laughs> uh, yeah it was, it was super scary well unfortunately in a situation like this the zookeepers could not tranquilize the gorilla because when when you trank it's not like in some movies where you trank an animal and they instantly fall over mm -hmm. it's a process it's sometimes could take several minutes for it to take effect yeah and, you know especially in that time it could agitate the absolutely the gorilla right because i mean you've got an animal as large as a gorilla it's going to take a while mm -hmm. especially a 17 year old a fully grown adult gorilla those things are not small by <laughs> any stretch and in that time i mean you shoot a gorilla with a dart Mm. That's not going to make the gorilla happy. So if he's got a, a you know, a little animal, a child that he's already dragging around, what's going to happen when he's agitated, you know? Yeah. So I, so I didn't see the the dragging part. Like I thought he was just trying to lift him up just to like it kind of looked like he was um like helping him get up. 
that's, that's that would have been saw. yeah that would have been great if the gorilla was calm i think the zookeepers would have been able to rescue the child without harming the gorilla but the gorilla is very agitated and very mm-hmm. and you could tell in the video that i mean it was very like jumpy and it was like flexed it was mm-hmm. ready to rock and roll. Yeah, I need to rewatch this. Like I watched it on my phone, so I guess. Oh, we you did. Oh, so you did thing. see. You did see. Okay. Yeah, I saw it. I just thought it was like picking it, uh, picking the child up, and then, like, not over his head or anything, just right. lifting him up. Yeah. Like from the ground. Yeah. So unfortunately, what happened is they they had to use a rifle, and uh, unfortunately, had to put uh, Harambe down. Um, so we've got a dead gorilla. Hmm. And then a safe child only had minor injuries, like some scrapes mm-hmm. and whatnot. Uh, went to the hospital, checked out fine. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a big controversy now. Whose fault was it? Should something uh, d- differently have taken place um, mm-hmm. given that the event occurred? Um, I don't know. So let, let, let's back up. I want to I break this down. So let's back up to the beginning. I was talking about from a, a parent's perspective, mm-hmm. seeing your child uh, get in into the the pen, in the fear, like that. I can't even imagine. This is like a parent's nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I can't. How long was a parent away from the child for them to do this? Uh, yeah, and, and see, and that's that's part of the controversy. A lot of people. Uh, you know, everybody, the, the internet, everybody comes out of the woodwork and has their opinion and, and oh, well, what you should have done and, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm sorry. For those of you that have never been a parent, it only takes about two seconds for a four-year-old to disappear off the face of the planet. They, you, you turn your head for a second and they are already half a block away from you. It's like four-year-olds, like two to four-year-olds have this like magical power or something like little gnomes yeah it's it is it's ridiculous they they just they're escape artists so so what about the zoo then because there there shouldn't be a way for people to fall into especially a four-year-old to be able to fall into a a gorilla habitat or any sort of Exactly, and that's and that's my point. Uh, you know, obviously, ne- none of us were there. We don't know what happened exactly. Uh, it very well could have been the the parents' fault, but I, it's at least plausible that the parents just turned their head for a second, and the and the kid slipped into this enclosure. I am exactly, uh, uh, I, I guess, uh, on on the zoo's case about this because. How? How? Like th- there had to be like a a large hole in the fence or mm. a, you know, th- I I can't imagine. You could be the worst parents in the world and have the shittiest kids in the world that go and you know just raise hell, and there still should not be any way whatsoever for a child to get into a gorilla enclosure. Mm-hmm. So I you know, again, I don't know the details of the situation, but I I don't know how this could fall on anyone other than the zoo. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you, what, what do you think? Uh, well, it's just a tragedy for the gorilla uh, yeah. and, and the child. But I don't know. It, it just It's just a poopy situation. Yeah. It just sucks. Well, well, take me back. Imagine yourself as the child and you yeah. fell into this <laughs> enclosure. I, I do remember the child like crying and stuff when the when the ape was like, "Oh yeah," or, or um, the gorilla, I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, g- at- gorillas are apes, so that was that was oh. acceptable. <laughs> the gorilla looking at the at the child like, "Oh, well, let me touch you." And he's like, "Ah, just don't touch me." <laughs> <laughs> like, "Ooh, I have a new pet." Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I and who knows? Who knows? The the gorilla was just being a gorilla. Mm. If there hadn't been, you know, people there freaking out and agitating the gorilla, would this have resolved very peacefully? I mean, I, it, I feel like there definitely was a world that this could have resolved peacefully. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's just, I don't know. It's unfortunate, and I, I hate situations like this for, uh, for a couple different reasons. One, 
you know, it's an unfortunate event. The the mm-hmm. child is probably mentally scarred now. The yeah. parents are almost certainly mentally scarred by this. Uh, and the world is is lighter by one gorilla. Mm-hmm. That really sucks. And, and gorillas aren't the most populated right. species on the world. In right. The world. Exactly. And but but what really pains me because I mean things like this happen. Things like this mm-hmm. happen, you know. But what really pains me is anytime there's something like this, the internet rises up and plays judge jury and wish they could be <laughs> and wish jury. they could be executioner and mm. and they really have no idea but there's this like i said giant controversy when let it go like let it go it's an event that happened give your opinion say what you you know, say your thoughts, well, or whatever. The thing but don't, is that some like, people are just giving their you. opinion, but there's so many people giving their opinion, letting it go that it feels like everyone's making their their yeah. case like over and over and over again, even though it, it, uh, yeah, most people are just saying, "Oh, this sucks." Right? Or, yeah. Or, there's a, there's a lot of truth to that. Well, I think whether it's whether it's a, a the same group saying the things over and over or if it's just you know a million single individuals saying the same thing uh, what really bothers me though is the the accusations and the well and then in today's internet world it's all about threats and everything um mm. but, but just the you know the the parent can very easily like i said just turn the head for a second and the child vanishes mm. yet there are people calling like you know, to hang these parents <laughs> for, oh, fuck, oops. You know what I mean? Mm. This was not some some giant uh, uh, neglect case on, the, on the, the part of the parents, or at least nothing that I have read or seen yet. Yeah, if uh, it was, like, longer than a minute, though, then, then that kind of... Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. But, but at the same time, like I was saying, it... it there should never be a way for a child, even the most unruly mm. and determined child, should not be able to get into a gorilla. Enclosure. Yeah. Yep. So I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just unfortunate all the way around, and uh, I wish it didn't like, happen. I, I'm just thinking, like, saying against the parents, you're already in a public area where someone could steal your child away. Sure, or sure. Or whatever. So you should have more careful eyes towards your child instead right. of... What do you think about leashes? <laughs> Should we put kids on leashes? Uh, no. <laughs> you know, there is such a thing, right? Yeah, I've seen stuff. <laughs> uh, there, there's actually been a lot of memes that's came that's come out based around this gorilla. And one that I've seen is if a gorilla baby goes onto a, like, onto a concert stage where, like, a, does the, does the, the the musician get get killed because of it. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, I, come on now. Yeah, so I'm just like some people are very determined and like dislike this situation so much. Yeah, and- yeah. Well, and that's another thing too. People tend to always side with the animal. Um, the child's mm. the child's life was in danger, and that's what it comes down to. Uh, do you risk this little boy's life for the possibility of saving the gorilla, or do you guarantee? The child safety, mm. you know, I, I'm sure that's controversial as well. But I'm sorry, it's a four year old little boy. I'm gonna do everything in my power to save that child. Mm. What if it was the only of two, two gorillas? Like, <laughs> oh let's God. say one of them is a boy and one of them is a girl. They they have to repopulate. Oh and man! See, that's an impossible. This is yeah. You're, you're giving me the Kobayashi <laughs> Maru. There is no correct answer on this one. It's like, oh, dang it! I'm just geez. glad that I'm not in that situation. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh my god! Going to be mad either way. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That. Oh man. You you totally Kobayashi Maru'd me. <laughs> Do you know what that is? The Kobayashi. No, Maru? I've never heard of that. Oh. You non trekkie Oh, well, that's, that's the Kobayashi Maru is actually it's the name of a starship, but more importantly, it's the name of a test that is given to starship captains mm-hmm. at the Starfleet Academy, and it's an impossible scenario where no matter what decision you make as a captain, it's going to be the wrong decision because mm-hmm. you're either going to 
let your crew die or you're going to like destroy an innocent ship full of people or, or something mm. something along those lines. I don't remember the exact details. Uh, but um, Captain Kirk found a way. This is this is in Star Trek Two, I think. Okay. Captain Kirk found a way to beat Kobayashi Maru. Actually, this sounds a little bit familiar. Yeah, like I've, I've seen Star Trek, the two, three, and four. Before. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's like Khan. Yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah. He ended up he ended up cheating because he re- he reprogrammed the scenario oh. <laughs> so that he could win. And he's the only person in Starfleet history to beat Kobayashi Maru. Beat. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, it's the impossible scenario. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's gonna be a short show this week. Do you have anything else you want to bring up? Any any topics? Um, no, I'm I'm good. Yeah. Cool. So do you do, do you have any other podcasts or anything? Uh, we've we need to start working <laughs> on Film Zone again. We've kind of taken a hiatus. Yeah, unintentional break on it. Yeah, there's there's one episode in the can that just needs to be published. Yeah, <laughs> um, actually has a little guest on it. Yes, yeah, oh. surprise guest is on that show. Mm. Um, that should be coming out soon as well. <laughs> uh, soon, yes, soon. Yeah. Soon is relative. It'll be soon. Mm. <laughs> I can guarantee it <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it is a relative term. Um, no, yeah, uh, Film Zone is L- L- Lucas and Lucas's and my podcast about movies. Mm. Uh, it's really fun. Uh, go go find it. It's on iTunes and all the places. Uh, we've got so it's less I than ten. It's like six or seven episodes, I think. Yeah, out I think there right it's now. six. Yep. It's and either this is the sixth episode or yep, and more more to come, more to come. We've got we've got a lot of stuff lined up that we just need to sit down and record. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So there's that. Uh, do you want people to follow you on Twitter or anything? Uh, yeah, follow at Movie Man Lucas and see what I'm doing. Awesome. I, I see you put a lot of well, you used to anyway. You put a lot of Hearthstone comments in there. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. Blizzard fanboy over here. So yep. if you like Blizzard, follow follow at Movie Man Lucas. Mm. And occasionally I talk about movies, but not not as u- usual as Blizzard stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's fun stuff. There's um, Lucas and I sometimes go back and forth a little bit with some some uh, funny banter. I don't know. Follow follow us <laughs> both. I'm follow at us for some funny banter. <laughs> I'm at rm underscore del noche. Mm. <laughs> uh, like you might have heard once or twice before. You can go to ratebeer.com and look mm-hmm. up username Del Noche, and you can read all of my 500 beer reviews. Um, if you guys remember Amos, he hasn't been on here mm-hmm. in like a month or whatever, but you can follow him at Ethan Kane on Twitter. You can follow our show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. You can submit ideas in our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. Please go there. We have a severe drought of ideas <laughs> lately, um, so, so go do that. We need some funny banter. <laughs> yes, banter. It's all about the banter. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the banter. Anyway, never mind. Uh, moving on from that, <laughs> you can email the show podcast at ritualmisery.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail. I almost guarantee you that we will play it on the show. Mm. Uh, leave us a voicemail 56769TRNPC, 56769876672. Of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give your feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thanks for listening. For me, for Lucas, for Amos even, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Bye. Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs>